When you hear a sound in the middle of the night, safe to say it's going to give you a jolt. This time, though, the jolt was real for those in the southeastern corner of Colorado. It was a 3.8 quake that struck there. It's not by any mapped fault lines. But guess what follows a fault line exactly? Highway 24 between Colorado Springs and Woodland Park. Are we at risk and what triggered the Pritchett quake anyway? We set out to find out what's behind Colorado quakes. Pritchett, Colorado, population 140. It's about as far southeast as you can go in Colorado. The days here are defined by hard work. The seasons defined by how kind Mother Nature is, where wind is the known constant. That's why when a 3.8 magnitude earthquake rattled this corner, it caused quite the commotion. The earthquake's epicenter was right over there in this cow pasture about five miles north and west of Pritchett. Sure, 3.8 magnitude quake isn't big by California or Alaska standards, but because it was closer to the Earth's surface than a lot of big tremors about three miles down, of the few people who felt the quake, it was much more noticeable than had it been deeper into the Earth's surface. It was thunder times like a thousand. It woke Tiffany Hume out of a sound asleep. We had had thunderstorms that night and I just thought it was a big bolt of lightning and thunder. She lives in Springfield, just a stone's throw from the epicenter. I kind of was hoping our shed got hit by lightning so we could get it replaced. Um, realized that wasn't it, so then our house had to have been hit by a car. That was the only other logical explanation I could think of. At 327 in the morning, your mind goes in all sorts of directions, but she did the logical thing any wife would do. I said, go check outside. No damage at her house. The cracks up here on the top. But that wasn't the case here. This homeowner woke up the next morning to find a series of cracks through his brick house in Pritchett. Insurance won't cover it. This kind of shaking, not the type that everyone's used to here, is even the talk at the county seat headquarters. Here we don't think of earthquake. We thought a tornado. It was more like a loud crack. Very startling. <laughs> so what caused the quake? You can see there's not much topography here. There's a lot of flat. Here, the red lines represent faults in Colorado. You can see the quake and its small aftershocks. They're nowhere near a fault line. It's exciting to see as a seismologist these earthquakes that occur in places that we don't normally expect. Safe to say geophysicists have a different reaction to quakes. William Yak says those mapped faults, the ones we know about, are much deeper. But it's a different story for faults closer to the crust. In the subsurface, there are faults everywhere that we just don't know about. And the slip rates on those faults are very, very low. They don't slip very often. Colorado is no stranger to quakes. These gray dots represent tremors here since the 1800s. The largest was a 6.6 .6 just west of Fort Collins back in 1882. You can see the Raton Mesa is quite active. A 5.3 rattling Trinidad in 2011. Let's go back to that map of the known fault lines in Colorado. These ring the San Luis Valley. Here are the Collegiate Peaks, the Rampart Range, and see this? That's one of our major thoroughfares, Highway 24 through Ute Pass. Is it possible that a quake could occur on one of the most heavily traveled routes in southern Colorado? So Colorado has a lot of geologically expressed faults that we see, such as the Ute Fault Zone near Highway 24. And the slip rates on these faults is fairly slow. So we don't expect to see a lot of seismicity on them. They definitely can host earthquakes, but it's not something that we see commonly. So in short, it's possible, but not probable. So just how often do we get earthquakes at 3.8 magnitude like Pritchett had? According to the USGS, it happens about once a year somewhere in Colorado. And from now on, every time I drive that stretch of Highway 24, I'm going to be thinking about it. Thanks a lot.